Well, hello, hello to everybody. Um, first, I'll thank all of my subscribers and all of those who will subscribe. I hope I earn your subscription today, as Dan Hurd says. Um, so what I want to do is I had a customer contact me and asked me if I could put something together, but of course it was winter time, so I couldn't, I couldn't really get out and, and do that. But so what we want to do here is just go walk through and show you the do's and don'ts of any fluid bed, really, not just mine. But of course, being clear, we learn that it's, it's rather educational. It tells you exactly how to run it. Um, it tells you your feed rate. It tells you if it's set up right. So we're going to go through all that in this video. So I hope you enjoy and um, I'll catch y'all later. Take care. Joseph Greenbaum Gold Trap, Saturday, March 28th. And today I'm going to walk you through the do's and don'ts and how to run the uh, Green Mountain Gold Trap. And I've got the three foot riverbed hog with me today, so the feed rate with the three foot is obviously faster than the 23 inch pay streak finder. So I'll go ahead and get things set up here and show you, but the first thing's first finding a place to set up and with a fluid bed it's all about water velocity so the good thing about the Green Mountain Gold Traps being clear is they're they actually turned out to be rather educational they will tell you if they're set up properly and I'll walk you through that in a few minutes here so let me get set up all right so the first thing you want to do once you get it set up is throw some blank material to charge the gold trap, the capture tray, and then we'll see if it's set up properly by doing so. Alright, so what you don't want to see is in the center here, it'll be blowing out in a U shape like a plunge pool. If that's the case, then you've got it set up too steep. You've got this end dropped down too much, so you'd need to raise it up a little bit. Alright, now I want to show you something else. Like I said, Green Mountain Gold Traps are very educational. I'm going to throw a little bit more material in there and then I'm going to show you. Now, if you shovel too much on too fast and stuff gets hung up on the classification plate, watch inside here. 
that's creating turbulence inside the gold trap, inside the capture tray. That's why it's not a good idea to just drop a whole shovel full on, and that's with any fluid bed. But with the black ABS plastic type, we never knew that because we couldn't see what was going on inside. Now we can. Alright, so speed rate, you just want to watch it do its job. the rock That's how I like to feed mine, and I think that's the smartest way to do it. And that's with any fluid bed that's on the market. I mean, well, was on the market. So once we get to the point where we'll do a clean out, I'll bring you back and show you that as well so we can get everything in one video. And as I said, I think I said it already, with a fluid bed, it has everything to do with water velocity. So like with the traditional sluice, you've got a three foot sluice. On the back end, you'd give it a three inch drop. That's not exactly the case with this. You're gonna be dealing with different water velocity scenarios. So it all depends on what you're dealing with for water velocity. So like I said, you set it up, you throw some blank material in and take a look and see what's going on inside the gold trap. And with everyone that's purchased, there's instructions inside the box. And also, with the three-foot riverbed hog, it always comes with your eye hooks, so you can hook a strap to it. The front one is always already installed. The back one is in the box, and you have to install it. And that's with a 7 16th wrench. All right, so I'm going to get busy. Catch you in a bit. rocks are getting hung up on there what I really should do in that case is try to divert some more water over here to get it to come over the top of the skid plate so I'm gonna see if I can do that it's kind of deep over there but we'll see we'll see if I can get it to work a little bit better all right problem solved I just threw some bigger rocks in over there to catch more of the current, bring it over this way. Now I've got better, better velocity going over the whole thing. Sweet! Alright, I'm going to get busy. Got a fairly decent V going down the skid plate too. Nice! Put some water in a five gallon bucket. 
right on there that walk off the floor of the big Because I see gold in here. Watch it right down inside. Got it. Now, the best way to remove the top of the tray. Stick your fingers inside your thumbs on the front of the, the exit plate. Push and pull at the same time. Rinse it out really good. Rinse out your tube. Stick your hand inside here and rinse that out really good. You don't want any debris or grit inside there. Light the tray back in. just to lock it in place if I was going to keep running. But I'm not. I'm going to be done for now. And all you're left with is mostly your heavy rocks in there. But mostly black sand. Alright. I'm going to pan this and see what I get. seeing all kinds of gold up through here. All the way up around this edge. Let me finish this off. I'm having a hard time bending over and doing this, but yeah, that piece right there. All right, I'll get back to you in a minute here. All right, I got a pan, but 
like I said, with the three foot riverbed hog, weight it down, weight your bucket down with some water, stick it on the end, blocks the water flow off really nice. You wanna keep the water moving through the scoop. You're not gonna blow gold out when you remove the capture tray. By leaving that unblocked, you're able to clean out the inside of the cavity where the capture tray goes into good. So that's the reason why you wanna just block off your flow to your, your skid plate only. Now with a 23 inch pay street finder, you can use a gold pan, you can find a rock. I mean, you don't have to totally block off the water flow. There can still be water going down the skid plate, even, even that much right there. It's not gonna hurt it any, it's not gonna blow your gold out. So just find a rock, a decent sized rock that'll go almost the whole way across or use a pan, that works just the same. Of course, if you use a pan, you're gonna be kind of blocking off the, the scoop, but anyway. So, this is the gold for the day. You put a, a rock in there. There's some mighty fine gold in there. Really tiny pieces. There's one right there that's just a micro dot. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. I dug this down really good from here all the way up to there. And I'll test pan to make sure that I'm still on the gold. Periodically, I'll stop shoveling into the gold trap and I'll, I'll do a test pan, about two and a half shovelfuls. And usually I get about two or three pieces per, so. All right, I've got two gold traps that I've got to ship out, one to Dave in Georgia and one out to California, and I can't remember his name. But anyway, I was supposed to drop them off. Look at this, it's all blurry. There we go. I was supposed to drop them off on the way here, which I tried, but they weren't gonna be open for another 45 minutes. So I said, I'm going to the river. So that's what I did. Had a good time. Hope y'all enjoyed. Thank you to my subscribers. Those of you who have not subscribed, please do. And hit that like button, share, leave a comment. And I'll get back to you. Oh, by the way, um, Vogus, Chris at Vogus Prospecting in Australia. Very shortly here, his next video is gonna be uh, on one other product plus the uh, Pay Street Finder. So go check it out. If you haven't subscribed to Vogus, subscribe. He's a great guy. Love his dog, Grizzly. I just love that dog. <laughs> but anyway, I'll catch y'all later. Take care.